It gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest today. He is Wassum's founder. He's someone who in his more than 30 years experience in higher education has been known for building strong teams which produce exceptional results for students. He most recently spent 11 years as the Vice Dean and Operations Leader for Ross University School of Medicine just prior to founding Wassum. And before Ross, he spent 17 years in the admissions and enrollment management departments at Ramapo College of New Jersey, ultimately rising to the title and position of Vice Provost for Enrollment Management. So I'd like to welcome our guest, the founder of Wassum, Peter Getz. Hey, thank you very much, Sean. You know, when I heard you that intro, it, it took me back because you and I have known each other for 27 years. So I think people are expecting to see some rickety old person sitting here and not the vibrant self of, you know, that they're seeing, myself that they're seeing here right now. With more than 30 years experience in higher education, um, what initially led you into this career? And, and I guess really more importantly, what's kept you in it all these years later? You know, no one goes to school and dreams about being an admissions counselor or working in admissions. Uh, I always thought radio or television would be where I'd end up. Um, obviously, I have a, I have a uh, face for radio, so I was uh, spent a lot of time in radio, but then realized that I didn't want to keep making, um, you know, minimum wage in radio in small markets uh, for years and years to come. And uh, so I, I had an opportunity to start working at Ramapo College, as you mentioned, worked my way up through the uh, through uh, hard work and every few years I'd get another promotion and in the state system it's hard to do so but I ended up as you mentioned uh, dean and uh, vice provost and then I had the opportunity I heard about this medical and vet school in the northeast that was looking for a vice president of enrollment and marketing um, I had no idea where there was a med and vet school in the northeast um, so I called the headhunter and it ended up being uh, Ross University that had headquarters in the northeast so they were located the med school in dominica and the vet school in in st kitts um worked there had a great career and uh, then decided it was time to do something even more special and i looked toward um, starting uh, or founding our, our own international medical school with some great people and here we are i know access is important to you so can can you talk about that and, and how it relates to the founding of wasson yeah, you know, there are about 150 U.S. Uh, LCME allopathic medical schools, so U.S. medical schools, about 150. But even with that, that leaves us about uh, with about uh, 22,000 seats and about 55,000 students who will want to attend medical school. So there are about 33,000 students each year that are turned down. And uh, I thought to myself all these years, there needs to be more. There needs to be a greater access. There needs to be access for diverse populations to attend medical school. Most students that uh, are turned down by US medical schools aren't turned down because they can't be uh, great doctors. They're turned down because there's not enough space. So I said, there's, why, why can't we help fix that? You know, come the year 2030, which is only nine more years away, we're gonna have a shortfall in this country of 140,000 physicians. So there's huge need. And I said, wow, what an opportunity to, uh, to, to put the greatest people I ever met in higher education together, find out how interested they would be in doing so. I talked to first Dr. Flaherty, who was on a previous uh, live stream, Dr. Wales, who was on another live stream. And in talking to them, I realized you only need about seven or eight people um, as the core foundation to start a medical school. You need hundreds eventually to pull together, but if you can get seven or eight of the best, put them in a room together in, in each of these specific areas where you need that expertise, you can create something special. So we, it was an opportunity to have a to, to go forward with a career path where you're doing something really important, helping meet that physician need, doing it at a price that's affordable. We have this first semester select scholarship at Blossom. None of our students will pay for their first semester. It's absolutely tuition and fees free for the first semester and uh, allow them to have an opportunity to become doctors. There's nothing, Sean, as you've seen before, more exciting then when we graduate uh, a class, it will be our first class sometime around 2025 or 2026, and they walk across that stage for the first time and we say, Dr. Sean Powers, um, and then you say doctor and the family's there, and you know everyone starts tearing up and crying and cheering. It's the most special moment for those students. But you also know now with your life, you've done something vitally important. Um, you, you've done something that helps uh, society, helps the students, 
and um, makes all the people working for the institution feel really good about what they're doing with their lives. What does it feel like to see that vision finally realized? You know, it's incredible, Sean. It uh, was a um, a pipe dream of sorts when I started um, when I started thinking about this. Uh, you know, Dr. Joe Flaherty had a very distinguished career at the University of Illinois, uh, where he was dean and chancellor, and then at Ross University School of Medicine, where he was dean and chancellor. And he had retired, but somehow, you know, we we became uh, both great colleagues and great friends and. When he left, I really thought there was some unfinished business in his, in his when he decided to retire. Um, he was, um, he, he's always been, um, you know, extraordinarily um, young at heart and one, I always thought wanted to do more. So when he had retired, I, and I, this idea popped into my head, I, the first person I, I met with after my wife said it was okay that I do something like this, I, I went to uh, meet with Dr. Flaherty and, um, you know, most people said to me that that knew me, that friends that weren't involved said, you know, there's no way he's going to want to do it. He, he, and he retired. And I said, no, let me see. And probably within 10 seconds, he said, I'm in. And it was incredible because, you know, he said, you know, if, if you could put this team together, uh, Peter, and we can get Dr. Wales and then we can go get Jamie a Drucker to be our senior vice president and we can get Sean Powers to be director of admissions and we can get Jen and Mallory and Kelly and we can go get Tom Shepard who was former formerly the president of both Ross Med and Ross Vet and uh and and all the other folks that we've been able to put together if we can get all these people into one uh great team um and then get Chris to to do all the video for us like we're doing right now thanks Chris behind the scenes no seriously we can put a great team together an opportunity to bring the best sort of dream team together. So I said, well, what if we got the greatest team that, you know, imaginable, but got those folks who had all at one point at, uh, or another had worked together. So that's what we've done. All the people I mentioned, you know, Jennifer Dennis, our our, um, our assistant dean and financial aid leader, she um, has is the, is the is the best financial aid person I've ever met. You in, in admissions, Paula Wales, Dr. Joe Flaherty, Dr. Wales, I should say, Dr. Laura Welke, our campus dean. The best of the best, putting them together in one group has been um, invigorating and it proved that um, that people care more about what they're doing than um, than where they're doing it. Can you talk about the selection of Freeport Grand Bahama um, as the location for the pre-clerkship campus and why it will be beneficial for students? You mentioned it's right off of the coast of Florida, so clearly that's a big benefit right there. And, and what does that really mean, certainly in the in the context of the other options that, that prospective medical students will have? We all put our heads together to come up with what we thought would be you know, the best ideas for the school. Number one, we said um, we, we need to worry about cost because students are already so much in debt. So how do we create a medical school? We know it's gonna be expensive, but how do we create a medical school that, that uh, per year, uh, when you uh, put it across four years is under $50,000 a year because almost all schools, unless they're in state schools and you live in that state are gonna be well over $50,000 a year. So how do we keep the price under 50,000? And that's with the select scholarship. Then the second thing was, as you just mentioned, Sean, the location. So we have 80 miles here. It's 80 miles from the coast of Florida is the campus, but um, Grand Bahama Island is 60 miles from, from the east coast of Florida takes 20 minutes in flight, two hours, two and a half hours by ferry, and you're there. Here we have a place that's 20 minutes away, same time zone. You could, um, you know, it, it, you could, Bahamian dollar and the US dollar interchangeable. So you, they're one-to-one, -one. there's no money exchange issues. You could use either. It feels like when you're on the campus and you see some of the, uh, some of the pictures of what the campus will look like as we're building, building it out now, you have an opportunity to be so close and you feel like you're sort of in rural Carolinas or rural Florida. It feels like a beach town. It still has highways, unlike most um, islands that are that are considered Caribbean. But, you know, here I sit at our main office in South Florida in Plantation and um, or I'm at my home five minutes from our campus in, in Plantation, um, our, our main office and where we'll have the map program. Um, and the campus is actually 60 miles northeast of where I'm located. So I always joke with all of the, all of the folks that are up north. I, I tell them I'm going up to the campus today to, to visit because it's literally north here. It's in the Western Atlantic. So we wanted to have something affordable. We wanted to have something that people would want to go to. 
expect they can get home if they have a great event that happens in their life, or God forbid they have a sorrowful event that happens in their life, they could be home for a weekend for um, for a special event, for a sad event, um, because we want to not just educate students in medical education, but we want them to have a premier experience. Not only do we have you know, highly recognized academic leadership on campus taking students through the first two years, what's commonly known as the pre-clerkship program, obviously preparing students to get on the floor at a hospital. Um, and to that point, we've announced St. Anthony Hospital in Chicago as our first clinical affiliate in the United States. So can you talk about your involvement and your experience in creating and refining clinical opportunities for students during your career um, and how that experience has informed Wassum's plans for clinical clerkships? Yeah, thanks, Sean. We're so pleased that St. Anthony Hospital uh, as you see uh, a photo of it here in, in Illinois, is our first, uh, Chicago specifically, our first partner hospital. Um, obviously, we need one before we could have two and three and four, but we will be adding many other places. But St. Anthony has long been a partner of those of us that have uh, worked in this space. Um, Dr. Flaherty and I especially know um, Dr. Lavani uh, very well uh, from that hospital. Um, and, um, and we know um, the CEO, uh, Guy Medaglia, very well. So we're happy to be a partner there. When I was at uh, Ross, one of the tasks I had was, um, was, was really fixing the clinical network there. And in doing so, it was to create what we, would, what we uh, affectionately ended up calling tracks of rotations. And, and we were the only uh, international medical school that did this. And we'll be doing it at Wasson Soldi. And that's where students spend all 48 weeks of their third year of clinical rotations in the six core rotations. So you have family medicine, OBGYN, pediatrics, psychiatry, internal me medicine, and surgery. Those six, they'll spend those 48 straight weeks. The first four I mentioned are six-week rotations. Internal medicine and surgery are 12 weeks. 48 weeks, third year, one hospital. They won't have to move around. Most international schools you go to, you'll spend six weeks in Chicago, then go to um, then go to Michigan for six weeks, then take off four weeks because it doesn't align before you go to New York to do a 12-week rotation, then down to Georgia, Florida. You get the idea. You have to move around. We created these tracks where students were tracked in, and that's what we're doing at Wassum. So with our first hospital, St. Anthony, students will spend their 48 weeks there, but we'll be adding hospitals throughout the country. Um, I can't quite yet announce them. So we'll be adding places throughout the country. Keep going, um, coming back to our website at wassum.education and you'll see where we're adding them. But um, our goal is only to add hospitals where students can spend their entire 48 weeks or third year at that hospital and then perhaps do their fourth year clinical rotations, uh, ed uh, elective rotations at those hospitals as well. Though truthfully, it's sometimes better to rotate at different hospitals and do auditions, if you will, um, prior to residency. I didn't want this to be students concerning themselves with, um, you know, we're another one of those international schools that only cares about money and doesn't care about education. So I said, let's take money out of the equation. Let's start the school, let the students come in at our risk, and look, if you start here and we don't, uh, we don't, we don't produce, we don't measure up, then all you wasted was um, someplace you had to eat and um, and pay for for housing and food somewhere. You had to do that somewhere anyway. And there's worse places you could do it than in the Bahamas. But um, but we're taking a risk because what the other schools do, all the international schools that offer scholarships, they offer them over um, four or ten semesters or however long their program might be. And they're actually banking on the count that some students won't make it because, you know, they're, they're building in attrition saying we won't have to pay all these students if we spread it out. We're saying we're not making this about money. We're putting all the risk on us. If, if you don't like it, then you're not going to end up paying a dime of tuition. Um, so try it out. We want to de-risk this for you. We want to make this um, something that you're doing because it's the right thing for you academically. And you'll learn that by coming here and not worrying about that money for the first term. Yeah, you'll have to borrow money from one of our lenders for, uh, unless you have it, for housing and for food, um, but the tuition over $20,000 for the first semester is completely waived for everyone who starts at uh, Wassum um, for the foreseeable future. It's not just for this first class, it's for, you know, it's for all of our classes in, into the future. What kind of options will students have for financial aid after the first semester? So we have, um, you know, we, we're, we're about to announce our um, major 
uh, first lender. It'll be on our website, we think by tomorrow or Friday. Um, and it's a it's a lender all of you have heard of. I just want to let it get on the website before we announce it, but they'll be there. And um, and uh, so after first semester, or even if you need money for first semester, you apply and you can borrow that money. Um, we will not, we're not yet um, eligible as a brand new school um, for um, U.S. Department of Education Title IV funding. That will come hopefully in the near future, but you have to graduate your first class to get there. So there'll be other, these lending options. Um, and, um, but one of the things we did is it, it's tuition and we call it tuition and fees, but there are no fees. Our tuition is our tuition, zero fees. So everything is built into the tuition. And again, that tuition is about $100,000 cheaper than the most expensive uh, schools in uh, the market um, and um, very reasonable among the, um, about, among the schools that uh, started in the last 10 to 20 years. Again, we wanted to keep it under um, $50,000 a year annualized, which I know still sounds like an enormous amount of money, but for medical school is not. So our total four-year cost for students starting this January, including the scholarship um, in there, is about $191,000, $193,000. Um, and, um, and they could borrow uh, up to the entire amount if, uh, if eligible. So um, we think we have it um, well aligned. We're also um, now also about to announce a Canadian lender as well for our Canadian students. Uh, we should have that announced shortly. Uh, so there are um, opportunities for students to borrow the money. Some might say if you're starting a new program, a new university, it would be a good idea to have lesser requirements um, in order in order to attract your first students and 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 you know ensure that you have some enrollment. You know, why are we choosing not to do that here? Um, I don't really think it's a choice. I think it's a necessity. If we're creating a serious medical school, we have to be serious from the start. Now, just because we have, um, you know, uh, you know, real admissions requirements that require um, a successful GPA and a, a, an MCAT um, and everything else that goes along with that doesn't mean that we're not looking to admit as many students as possible. I always like to say, Sean, you're the director of admission. You're, you know, um, or, or, you know, Jennifer Yao, uh, who is director of, a senior director of enrollment management. You're not director of rejection. Um, she's not the, uh, of, uh, she's not the um, senior director of deregistration. The idea is to enroll, to admit. Those are positive words. There's no quota. We can admit as many as, uh, as are qualified. Obviously, we have to make sure we have academic support in place to do that. But we're look, we want to admit as many, but to be a serious medical school, you have to have requirements that are similar to that of US schools. It doesn't mean we put all the weight on the MCAT or all the weight only on GPA. We really do take a holistic view of your application, but unlike I think every single new medical school that has started in the last 10 or 20 years that just have um, sort of open admission requirements for, uh, for those who apply, we want to be taken seriously we want our creditors to take us seriously. And um, to do that, we had to have standards that were similar to that of US schools. Doesn't mean you need um, a 520 on the MCAT. It doesn't mean you need a 500 on the MCAT. We, we, we've taken people or will take people that have, you know, um, 475, 480, but excelled in GPA. We'll take people who had really high MCATs and may have struggled to find their GPA legs. Well, look, at the whole application, but we're not going to simply pass people through and put people in to build an artificial enrollment. We're going to take people who are interviewed by you or other members of your team and that you deem having a substantially uh, um, um, reasonable chance to be successful. How will you define success uh, for Wassum as you look back you know, a few years from now? You know, I think I, again, I touched on this a little earlier. Students. Um, what, uh, you generally use medical school as just a vehicle to get to the next step. You know, you need to go to medical school to become a physician. And of course that's true. Um, but I, I've also watched over the years where students haven't necessarily loved their experience for various reasons. I want students to look back at these um, four years, two in Freeport, two in the US at our clinical teaching partners, and say I was treated like a VIP from day one. I was never a number. I was someone that was treated with respect 
everything you promised me from day one, you delivered upon, or if there were things that um, that didn't meet my expectations, you explained why, and you did everything in your power to get it, to get whatever that is to meet my expectations. I want people um, to feel um, proud to be alum of Western Atlantic. I want them to um, tell their friends, their nieces, their nephews, their, their their children down the line that this is the place they should attend. And that I, you know, I received concierge one-on-one -on -one kinds of service. It wasn't a place that was just, you know, ticking off the boxes, but cared about me from day one, ensured um, that I had the knowledge to pass step one. Let's face it, we could sit here and teach all these esoteric things that are really interesting. Um, but when we hire faculty, the, the major question we want to know is, have you been successful in helping students achieve uh, the ability to pass step one, the first high level exam? Because whether you go to Yale, Harvard, University of Miami, St. George's, Ross, Western Atlantic, any school, everyone converges at the same point, step one doesn't, you know, and, and that's where everything is equalized. So are you prepared to do that? We should not be teaching things that are unimportant for that exam. There is time to teach other things that are important, but if we can't teach and make sure you're eligible to pass the exam, what are we doing? And so we make sure that the people who are teaching you understand that exam, understand what needs to be on it, we'll get you the knowledge so you're ready for it. We'll give you, we're gonna spend seven weeks of the fifth semester, half of the fifth semester, specifically giving you a free course on uh, how to pass the, you know, a, a prep course for step one and ensure you're ready for it. We um, are not looking for an 80% or a 90% pass rate. We want 100%. We want all of our students to be able to pass step one on that first attempt, because as I said, pass all your licensing exams, there's nothing anyone could do to mess you up. You're going to be a physician. Talk a little bit about our accreditation through CAMHP and how it works. Sure. So every school, whether it be a U.S. school or uh, an international school, has to have somebody um, accredit them. And in our case, we've chosen the uh, gold standard in the Caribbean, um, the Caribbean Authority for um, Academic Medicine and Other Health Professions, CAMHP. And um, uh, you know, and we, we, we applied for uh, accreditation and there are several stages to it. The initial phase, the only phase we could uh, we could have earned right now is candidacy status. And that means that we have the ability to hire faculty, to recruit a class of students, and then soon um, to apply for the next step, which would be the next step if you were a U.S. school as well, which would be provisional status. Um, and then eventually, as you are prepared to graduate your first class and do graduate your first class, you would apply for and receive, as long as you're up to standards, uh, receive full accreditation. So we're at the first step. It's it's as far as if um, if uh, pick a pick a if Princeton today wanted to start a medical school, they would start with you know the first level of accreditation with an that's of, of LCME uh, standards. Um, but what's very important to know about CAM is CAM follows the LCME's standards for approving medical schools. The U.S. Department of Education has determined that CAM has standards that are substantially equivalent to that of the LCME. So that means that our standards that CAM is holding us to are standards that are deemed substantially equivalent to what U.S. medical schools are held to. Um, so we're very confident in, um, in that level of accreditation. It allows you to uh, practice uh, medicine in um, in all 50 states, as long as you successfully complete the program of medical education. And, um, you know, so the most important thing is making sure that wherever you attend medical school, that they are accredited by, um, by also by a school that when the new rules come out from the ECFMG, which will happen in the next couple of years, they delayed it a little bit because of COVID, you're only going to list a few accreditors, CAM among them, that are eligible to uh, to accredit medical schools. So we're in um, terrific shape for that. And um, very soon, I think we plan on applying for the next stage of accreditation, uh, the uh, provisional status. But uh, I really appreciate time this afternoon. And once again, uh, certainly on behalf of our audience, uh, I'd like to thank Peter Getz, 
the founder of Wassum for your time today. Thanks for taking some time out, Peter, during what I know is a very busy schedule for you. Sean, after 27 years, it's always a pleasure to be with you.